He told me basically that they never married, but lived together for 27 years. And that wife testifies, and they have been living together for 27 years and split three years ago, and she needs spousal maintenance. Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another Texas Neighborhood Family Lawyers episode. Um, I'm not going to let up on this one. Whenever they send it, I'm going to I'm going to post and I'm going to create that playlist for you guys so you can follow all of their stories. But um if you guys have not seen any of their other stories, uh Here's the playlist in the cards, and I will also put them in the description. I'll put the link of the playlist. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and get into it. So the subject is, how can we be married? I never said I do. Hey, True. Once again, my wife and I were on your channel and wanted to thank you for reading our stories. It gives us just one more thing to bond over and is quickly becoming a regular discussion about which story to tell next. <laughs> nice. After reading the comments, we thought we could give some answers and share another story. But first, we noticed that there were a number of folks who was asking whether the wife or the husband cheated more. Honestly, I would say it's pretty close to 50-50. However, our law firm was very well known for successfully representing fathers and grandparents in custody matters. This was primarily due to the reputation our mentor had built prior to our arrival. In any event, we carried that legacy throughout our practice. We probably have just as many stories of husbands cheating as wives. We understand your channel probably does not cater to those particular stories. If you would like us to share some of those stories, we would be happy to do so. We'll do this. People in the comments, would you would you like to hear those all, all those stories, no matter who's cheating, the, the male or the female? Let us know in the, in the comments here. And uh, guys, uh, I'll email you back. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll see the comments anyway. You guys seem like you check out the comments, so salute to that. But I'll email you back if I see a number of people saying yes, yes, send in all stories. We want to hear everything, how everything goes. Cool. We'll, we'll go ahead and share those too. Um, if everybody wants to hear them. But um, let's continue here. Second, we noticed there was a lot of disagreement on our position about prenups. We specifically stated that rightly or wrongly, we think, based on years of experience, that prenups are used with a failure mindset towards marriage. The reason for this is that we regularly ended up representing folks for divorce who had previously come to our office and retained us to prepare a prenuptial agreement. In every case, they were regretful for even getting married and stated they should have known better. What we have directly seen is that those who came to the office asking for a prenup regularly ended up in our office ready to get a divorce. All were glad they protected themselves with our work. However, and this is just life knowledge, if you have enough doubt that you need to protect yourself in a marriage, you should probably hold off on getting married until that doubt abates you. Get to the root of that doubt so it can be addressed before marriage. We personally do not have a prenup or postnup agreement as we never contemplated nor do we contemplate getting a divorce. That's just us though and everyone should do what makes them feel most comfortable. If properly written, a prenup can protect assets earned or obtained prior to a marriage. A postnup is more effective at protecting properly acquired after a marriage. And always seek out a qualified family lawyer in your state or country when getting these documents drafted. Please note, this is not legal advice. There was also a question about a prenup signed in California. Being honored in Texas, the short answer is yes, it should be honored, as the full faith and credit clause of the Constitution would require it. In that situation, property should still be divided according to the prenup. Finally, there was a very good question about common law marriage. In Texas, this is referred to as an informal marriage. There is a ton of misinformation about what it takes to be common law married. Myth. If you live together for six months, then you are common law married. Wrong. 
We hear this all the time in Texas. This is not the law. In Texas, you can be common law married if one, you agree to be married, two, you hold yourself out as married, and three, you live together, cohabitate. What this means is that if you and your girlfriend, boyfriend agree you are married, then tell your friends you are married and are living together, that's it, you're married. There's no real time limit. However, both of you need to be 18. It is very easy to prove up cohabitation. Super simple. And no one can dispute that. People do it all the time. But cohabitation is not enough. What is harder to prove up an agreement is to be married and holding yourselves as married. Please note that simply holding yourself out as a married couple can and often does prove there was obviously an agreement to be married. I regularly proved up marriages based on tax returns. No formal ceremony existed. No license for a marriage was obtained. But taxes show married filing jointly. Boom. Other ways to show agreement. We're holding yourself out as a married is by referring to your significant other as wife or husband. Or by stating that you are common law married, which is usually based on the misunderstanding of the aforementioned six month myth or putting emergency contacts as husband or wife, going to the doctor or your employment and listing them as a spouse or basically saying the old ball and chain says I have to be home at 10. All of these can be considered as holding yourself out as married and as such, there must be an agreement to be married. It is also very easy to disprove informal marriages in Texas, especially when there is talk about getting engaged to be married or setting and planning to get married in the future. This shows that you are not married. Speaking not married, without further ado, how can we be married? I never said I do. Not a cheating story. An older gentleman came into my office holding a petition for divorce. I looked over and I was astonished that it did not have a date indicating when he was married. I was asking him about that. He told me basically that they never married, but lived together for 27 years. They had some grown kids. He was insistent that he never wanted to be married and doesn't understand how he could be married. My mind goes to work and I asked him to bring me in the past seven years of taxes and all info on any personal property so I can look over it. I was looking for any argument that the not wife had to show there was a marriage. My wife and I thought this would be difficult as they had lived together for 27 years and had grown children. He owned his own business and kept good records, so I gave him a strict deadline to get us the information as an answer needed to be filed. He comes in the next day with all his records, I take his retainer and I start to go over them. He had filled taxes in his businesses as single. He filled his personal taxes as single. His not wife was not listed. He claimed the kids sometimes and sometimes he didn't. His business was in his name. The home was in his name. We went over every document and found nothing to indicate a marriage. I then was asking for him to send me notes or any information as to where he may have indicated that she was his wife. I was searching for holding themselves out as married. There was nothing. As any lawyers would do, my wife and I filed an answer with no counter petition for divorce, but expressly denying the existence of any marriage. Strangely, I had never heard of the lawyer that, that was representing the not wife. Lawyers who practice family law in any area typically know one another on some level as we will cross paths regularly in our practice. I had never heard of this guy. I tried to call him, no answer. I left messages, no call back. So I faxed him the paperwork with basically a prove the marriage letter. I never actually spoke to this lawyer in person, but I did receive a long winded and vitriolic letter about how his crack team of family lawyers are prepared to go into court, blah, 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 whatever. I set it for hearing on the sole issue of determining whether or not there was a marriage. We show up to court and we were told to confer. I was out in the hall with the lawyer and learned he was actually a criminal lawyer, not a family lawyer. It also became clear that he had no actual proof of any agreement to be married, other than that they had cohabitated and she was there to testify. I myself had the past seven years of tax returns, business documents, and other assorted goodies to show no marriage existed. I also learned that my client kicked the not wife out about three years ago. I happened to know, but did not tell this to the other lawyer. That in Texas, if you could be considered common law married, but separate 
and remain separated for two years, then there is a presumption that no marriage exists. Long story short, I tell that lawyer that I hope his crack team of family lawyers has proof because he will not agree to this threshold issue. As petitioner, he goes first and not wife testifies. And they have been living together for 27 years and split three years ago. And she needs spousal maintenance or whatnot. I take her on cross and ask her for a specific date of the marriage. She can't answer. I ask her to provide tax returns or something showing she is married to my client. She has nothing. I ask her when she moved out. She says three years ago. I then bring in those tax returns with the proper predicates, and her name is not on them. I basically just decide to put on my case through her, which I do in my cross, bringing stuff into evidence that, frankly, I should have brought in through my client. The judge and I keep looking at the criminal lawyer like, why the heck is he not objecting? Object! But nothing. I was actually embarrassed for him. So, of course, without even calling my client to the stand, I then move for summary judgment, basically asking the judge to rule right then and there in my favor, citing the exact statute that says there is a presumption of no marriage and that the evidence pro-offered is not enough to legally re rebut the statutory presumption of no marriage, as they have been apart for three years. And based on a certain case, which I found in the comment section of Texas Family Code, the judge's only recourse is to grant my summary judgment and dismiss the case. Judge looks at me, then looks to the criminal lawyer, who just stood there like a knob, dead silence. The judge said, granted, and left the courtroom. There was no marriage, and my client got to keep all of his stuff without having to say a word. Nice. Lessons learned. So lessons learned. Number one, beware of pervasive myths about common law, informal marriage in Texas, like the six month rule, which is not a thing in Texas. Number two, keep good records of all your stuff, well organized and not stuffed in a shoebox. These records could likely save your bacon. Number three, always seek out a well qualified family attorney in your area where marriage is concerned. No crack team will be able to prepare a feeble and unprofessional mind. My wife and I realized this isn't a barn burner type of story, but wanted to address the informal marriage question with something that could keep your readers from falling into a trap. This is not legal advice, but may give some of your readers a better understanding of things in Texas. And let those outside of Texas know to actually learn their state country's laws regarding informal common law marriages. Six months is not a thing in Texas, and why does everybody believe six months? Keep up the good work, True, and next time, we'll be sure to send in a sexier story. Oh, <laughs> your friendly Texas neighborhood family lawyers. Thanks. Nice. Let me give my thoughts. Guys, I, appreci I appreciate this story. Yeah, yeah, like you said, it's not a uh, barn burner, or sexier story, whatever it is. This is this was great. You specifically answered questions in the comments. I love that you guys do that. You pick out questions and you answer them for the people because people I, I always notice every time I post this post one of your stories. There's a ton of questions. Everybody has questions. And to actually have a story regarding one question specifically is, is great. I love this story. I'm sure everyone else will love it. I'm sure everybody will learn something. This was great. It was very informative. Thank you. I appreciate it. Since I think since high school, I've always heard about common law marriage and I've heard I haven't heard the six month rule. I've heard a uh, I think it was a seven year rule. Like if you've lived with someone for seven years, you're married or five years or I've heard a number of different durations and times. But um, yeah, like you said, you just got to look, really look it up and look into it and look into the law. There's a lot of myths out there. So definitely, yeah, I agree. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. But um, I have always heard that. But uh, thanks for letting us know um, about Texas specifically. And this is not legal advice. So salute to you guys, man. I, I really appreciate you guys. You guys have been coming in with some great stories. This story is just as great as the others. Salute to that man. Salute to that man not being taken to the cleaners. He knew. He knew. He said, I'm never getting married. Look, I don't mind having a companionship. I don't mind being a couple, being monogamous, whatever. 
we can live together, we can do this, but I'm not marrying you. He had his own business. He's like, you're not going to take my stuff from me. I worked hard for this. I worked very hard for this. Salute to him. And look what happened, guys. He was with this woman for 27 years, didn't marry her. She tried to get him because you know what she would have done if she married him. She would have she would have taken him to the cleaners and she would have got away with a lot of stuff. Well, he makes a lot of money. I need help. I need spousal maintenance. Salute to this guy. I'm glad this guy made it out. So, guys, thank you so much for sending in this this story. I I appreciate this one. I like this one. Whatever story you guys send in, I know it's going to be great. I know it's going to be great. Whatever story you send in. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Um, if you want to check out all of their stories so far, check out the playlist in the description. It's also in the cards as well. So check it out there, and I will catch you guys at the next one.